My name is Jim Warren with Team America. What you have in your hand is the Trainer Fitness System, the finest training system ever developed. It originated with the Apollo Space Program used by the greatest athletes of all time and is now your tool to foundational fitness. You'll find that it solves the five problems of exercise, which are time, boredom, soreness, convenience, and staying with it. First thing you'd like to do is take out your trainer exerciser. And you'll notice that it has a label that has different pound markings. The indicator shows the exact location of the resistance setting or marking. When you first get your trainer, you'll notice that by pulling on one of the lines, there is zero resistance. Your indicator would be at the S of start. If you push the hub, the adjustment hub up and turn it to the right, you will find that it will start to add resistance. What I'd like you to do is go all the way around one time. And the first exercise we're going to do is going to relieve some neck and shoulder tension here. We take the trainer and place it in the top of the door. Make sure that the straps are separated. By separating the straps, it's easier to close the door, move it into position. Make sure you keep the trainer near the hinge side of the door. And that way you'll be a little safer. Take the handles and even them out. You want to have a palm down, thumb wrap around grip. From this position, bring your hands to your shoulders. You're not trying to pull back and forth. What you want to do here is just gently lean forward. This is a simple little stretch for your neck and your shoulders. Step back, relax those shoulders, move out to the side. In this position, you'll find that you'll be able to stretch the chest muscles. This exercise is very important because it allows you to not only stretch your neck and shoulders, but it gets the back of the leg. And ladies, that's real important because as you wear heels, the Achilles tendon starts to shorten and it puts a little strain in the back of the leg. As you get a little stronger and more flexible, you're able to move your arms out a little bit. Again, if you have a shoulder injury, keep your hands in tight so that you don't put any pressure in the shoulders, but you feel the stretch in the neck area. The next exercise we're going to do is for the number one area that women have problems with as we get older. And ladies, that's the back of the arm. From here, there isn't a diet in the world that'll tighten that up. Now, many of the experts will say we ought to be lifting a weight and doing an exercise here which will work on the back of the arm. This does the same thing. Put your back against the door. Bring the handle about nose height. Take the control line and pinch it underneath your first finger. In this position, push down and ease off that control line. Remember, anytime you start a different exercise, always do it gently and easily. Now, the trainer system saves us time because as we get stronger, instead of doing more and more repetitions, as we were taught, we pinch on that control line. Push for 10 seconds. After 10 seconds, you'll notice that my breathing goes up a little bit. It's called training. Now, if I push too hard, that would be called straining. Let's back off of it a little bit and move through that range of motion. Bring the handle back up to about nose height, pull down in the control line. You're ready for your third repetition. Pinch your finger on the control line and move down and through that range of motion. We're almost finished with the workout. Now the next exercise is real important because we're going to be sitting all day. Whenever you see an athlete go out for their sport, they make sure that they warm up the, the muscles they're going to use for their day. The exercises you're going to do today, you're going to be in the car. And that's where that stretch comes in. We're going to work the back of the arm so that we look great in short sleeves. It's also good for us, fellas, because it helps build size back into those arms. Next exercise is critical because most of us are going to be sitting six or seven hours a day. The back of the hamstrings get tight. The muscles in the abdominals start to sag, and our back is always stiff. By putting ourselves against the door, here's the position. I'm going to go through the motion without the trainer first. And you may want to try this because it'll allow you to get better results when you add the trainer. You get yourself into this position where your back is against the door, feet about a foot away, knees bent. It's like a standing sit-up position. If I were in the floor, it's exactly the position I would be to do my crunches. From here, you're going to bend forward nice and gently. Bring your elbows to your knees and then gently stretch those hamstrings. Bend those knees and then roll back. Now, here's the trick. By adding resistance, we're able to get better results in a shorter period of time. When I get back into my position, I'm not going to have my hands forward. I'm going to make sure that my hands are turned palms towards the door. Put the training uh, control line under my fingers. From this position, I'm going to pull forward for 10 seconds, concentrating on the abdominal muscles right here, your stomach muscles. And if you can hear that, that's tightening those muscles. At the end of 10 seconds, and notice that I'm breathing freely. And that's important. 
It's very important to breathe. It's good for your health. At the end of 10 seconds, I gently stretch those legs, then bend those knees and roll back gently. Now, when you first do this exercise and you're starting out your program, make sure that you do it very gently and easily. This is how easy many of us may have to do it, nice and gently. Remember, you're better off doing less today and more tomorrow than too much today and nothing for the rest of the year. Now, here's how your exercise should look possibly after six or eight months. Pinch that control line. Pull down for 10 seconds, really working that stomach muscle at the end of 10 seconds. Ease on the control line, moving down through that range of motion. Gently stretch the legs. This will not only tighten the waistline, but it's going to stretch our back and our hamstrings. The next exercise, ladies, is going to be very exciting for you. We're going to be working the inner and outer thigh, one of the major problem areas. Take the trainer out of the top of the door. Now notice we haven't changed any of the resistance on the adjustment hub yet because we've been using the control line to work on the resistance. If it comes to a point where you can't hold that line, you can always push that hub up and add a little more resistance. Or if it's too hard, push the hub up and back off a little resistance. Next exercise, ladies, inner and outer thigh. Take the trainer, put it low in the door. From this position, close the door, and you're going to take the, the control line and pull it so that one of the handles is close to the trainer. Take your control line and lay it out in front of you. From this position, we're going to make sure that our balance is very, very secure. The worst thing we can do is do an exercise and hurt ourselves. How many of you hurt ourselves during exercise? From this position, you're going to have your feet about arm's length away from the door. Take one of your feet, or your left foot at this point, and bring your right foot towards the trainer. Now, ladies, notice my knee. I never want to be in a locked knee position because as I put pressure, it will put too much pressure into the knee. Always soft knee, slight bend in the knees. From this position, ease on the control line and move that foot out across the body. Now this is the same exercise that you've done for years laying in front of the television and moving your leg up and down without resistance or using a little bit of ankle weights or the rubber bands. By using this control line, I'm able to add a little bit more intensity as I get in better shape, getting better results in that short period of time. Now three of those every day, and then you turn around and work on the other leg. From this position, we loosen that loop and change feet. We're now going to work the inner thigh of the right foot. Again, arms distance away from the door with your feet spread. From this position, put your weight onto the right foot, lift your left foot, and start to bring it across your body nice and gently. Now remember, when you're first starting your exercise program, just move through the range of motion with very easy resistance. By the end of three or four months, here's how the exercise should look. Holding back on that control line and moving and contracting with that leg. And notice that my breathing goes up but I can still talk. You know, that's a very important factor in making sure that you don't overwork. Your third repetition is still done nice and easily with knees slightly bent. After 10 seconds, move through that range of motion in a comfortable movement. You'll notice that your heart rate will go up a little bit in your breathing. After the third repetition, we're going to come down and we're going to switch positions. Stand up and turn around. Very simple motion. Slip the loop over the other foot. Get yourself in your arm position. From here, hold for 10 seconds and move that leg across that range of motion. Bring your foot back towards the trainer. Hold for 10 seconds and move again, working that inner thigh. Slip the loop over your foot. Put yourself at arm's length away from the door. Put your weight on your right foot. Move your left foot towards the trainer. And again, notice the slight bend in the knees. Hold for 10 seconds, breathing freely. After 10 seconds, ease on this control line with your left hand. Now what you'll find is that many times you'll be fighting yourself, trying to pull here and you're holding back on the rope. You make sure that you stay in balance and do it gently. Less today and more tomorrow is more important than too much today and nothing for the rest of the year. After the third repetition, we're going to move into the resistive aerobic run. Nice and gently move to there. When you finish that exercise, step down gently, replace the handle. We're going to move to the mid-door position. Now make sure that the door is locked during any of these exercises because if the door opens, it'll ruin your whole day. 
When we first started our exercises, we pushed in the adjusting hub and turned it around one time clockwise or to the right, and it puts us on one pound. We're now going to push the indicator hub in one more time and go all the way around, which now puts us on nine pounds. Now, many of us will have to be careful on the resistance, and you'll have to play with it. Those of us that are in a little better condition can use a little more resistance. Those of us that have been away from exercise for a while use a little less. Take your harness. With the hooks facing down on the right side, bring the harness around your waist. You're now going to take the inside hook and place it inside the strap. Make sure that it's secured. Come back to the door, and on the short line or the work line, we're going to hook the hook across that little chrome snubber that holds the handle to the ropes. Rotate the belt around your waist, and we now are going to go into our resistive aerobic walk. Remember, less today, more tomorrow is better than too much today and nothing for the rest of the year. I don't know about on your block, but on my block in Thousand Oaks, on January 2nd, 3rd, and 4th, looks like the Olympic Games begin. And the reason is because people go out and try to do too much too soon. Now from here, you'll notice, ladies, that it's a toe-to-heel exercise, which works the back part of the leg. Now you're going to move this out nice and gently for one minute. And as you get in better condition, instead of doing more and more time, you're going to increase your intensity. Now never pick your knees up so high that it causes injury. After you get to this position, rotate the hook and drop down the handle. Move back, and you'll notice that the other handle is now your work line. It's ready for your second motion. Again, take your hook, hook it over the snubber, make sure the door is locked and secure because this exercise will cause you to move through the house rather quickly if that door opens. Now from this position, as you get in better condition, you can increase your range of motion. We find that if you go for a walk and you walk three miles in 45 minutes, you get five aerobic points. If you can get to a pace where you can do a mile in seven minutes, you will find that you get five aerobic points. We need a minimum of 30 aerobic points a week in order to get cardiovascular fitness. After the second time, again, rotate back, unhook the hook, lay the, work, or the former work line down. We are now gonna do our third repetition. Now, if you'll notice, as I set this up, the rope went across the other work line. That will cause a little more resistance. Make sure that you place your control line down. Now, this is the pace that you want to get to. It might take you about six months before you get to this pace. But remember, less today, more tomorrow. Works the back part of the leg. After you finish that, go back and you're ready to put your trainer away. You see the stuff just coming off my forehead here? Only a few minutes of exercise. Any of you that are under stress, it's called endorphins. The hottest drug going, you can't buy it. Just doing a little bit of exercise will keep us ready for work. If you feel a little stressed out in your neck and shoulders, make sure you do that overhead stretch. You want to look great in the back of those arms. Do the upper body tricep exercise right there. Remember, if you're going to be sitting all day, you're going to want to be doing that standing sit-up nice and gently and then stretch those legs. Last exercise, ladies, do the inner and outer thigh nice and gently because by doing it every day, you'll find that your body will change. I'm going to go through the men's routine. We're going to show the fellas how to get rid of neck and shoulder tension, tighten up that sagging abdominal muscle, get some size and strength in their arms, and relieve some of that low back stiffness, and also work a little bit on their heart. Let's get started. The first part of the program is learning how to set resistance. The trainer system was used by NASA in the Apollo space program, and it allowed the astronauts to hook it to the spacecraft wall and duplicate any machine that they needed. We're going to go through a 10-minute routine because that's an easy one to stick with you'll find that there's zero resistance set on your trainer right from the factory. As you pull down or pull down up on one of the ropes, you'll find that the resistance is at zero. There's little or none. We're going to push on that indicator hub. As we rotate it around one full revolution to the right, it is now on one pound. Once we're on one pound, if we need two pounds, we push it in and move it over one notch, we're on two pounds. It's like pulling the pin out of a weight machine and adding resistance. We're going to back it off to one pound. We're going to do the first part of the workout, which is the upper body stretch. Whenever you see an athlete doing or getting ready for their game, they're always warming up the muscles they're going to use. A quarterback is out warming up his arm because they're going to be throwing. Kicker is out kicking. Well, you don't throw or kick for your living. First thing you did this morning for your game was get into the car. Next thing you're going to do is sit at the desk. 
or get on the phone. So at the end of the day, instead of us standing like this, many of us kind of stand like this. Here's a great exercise to relieve that neck and shoulder tension and help your posture. Place yourself arm's length with your hands at shoulder width. Your feet about shoulder width apart. You're going to now move with one foot forward and you're going to gently stretch. Now those of you with a shoulder problem, make sure you do this gently. Because if you do it too hard, you're going to aggravate your shoulder. One of the major concepts of exercise is to limit the range of motion and limit the intensity. Don't stop exercising, just make sure you do it easy. After the second motion, make sure you just stretch a little bit. Oh, why would you miss that one? It feels so good. It might take you six months before you're able to move through that full range of motion up here. Now make sure the door is locked when you do this. Because if that door opens, it might ruin your whole day. Now from this position, we're gonna move to changing legs back and forth, stretching the back of that Achilles. And that way we now have relieved tension up in our neck and shoulders. Next exercise, fellas, is for that upper body. One of the major problems as men is our problem starts back here and rolls out here. You know, and a lot of people always say, Jim, I don't care if I die tomorrow as long as I look good today. What do you have for the Budweiser tumor? Well, here's the one. What we want to do is face the door. Again, make sure that door is locked. We're now going to make sure take the handle and have it nose height. From here, we're going to pinch that control line under our finger because that's what saves us time by adding intensity and resistance. We now place our other hand on top. Now, the key to any part of this exercise program is good, good stability. You never, ever try to yank or pull or push off balance. From this position with your arms away from the door, slight bend in the elbows. You're going to push down and through that range of motion right there. Now, we could do that a hundred times, and with easy resistance, we wouldn't get much of a result. The key now is to pinch on this control line with your finger, push for 10 seconds. Don't push as hard as you can. Push about 50 or 60%. After 10 seconds, ease in that control line. Now, notice where my breathing is. My breathing is so that I can talk comfortably. If you start to push on that line and strain, you're never gonna do this every single day. So back off of it a little bit. Feel those muscles working. Do a workout, do a training session, not a straining session. After three of those, we're now gonna work the arm. Fellas, as we get older, our upper arm starts to look like our wrist because we're not doing enough. This is the same exercise that the ladies would do for the back of the arm. Put your back against the door. You're gonna bring the handle again about nose height. Your palms are gonna be away from the door and you're gonna pinch that control line right here. You're gonna push down. Now, notice every exercise that I do the first time is nice and easy because I wanna make sure that my balance is there. I wanna make sure that I don't feel awkward. I don't wanna cheat. Some of the people will get up here and they'll try to push like this. It's not gonna work that way. Pinch that control line comfortably. Breathe freely. Now if you have high blood pressure, ease off of that. Work on those arms. Feel the muscles working as you go through. On the third exercise, you might get a little more aggressive. At the end of 10 seconds of working on that back of that arm, ease in that control line with your finger and move down and through that range of motion. Now the next exercise is for the stomach, the back, and our hamstrings. You know, when we sit all day long, these muscles kind of fall forward. Our back is tight all day long and the hamstrings kind of shorten from sitting all day. This exercise will take care of all three of those. Again, your back is gonna be against the door, your feet about a foot away. In this position, handle nose height. Remember the last exercise we did, our palms were facing away. The standing sit-up, you now turn your palms toward the door. Take that control line and put it under your finger. You're now going to slide down. Now never arch your back in this position, always round your back. Any of you that have a back problem, remember the concept of limited range of motion, limited intensity. You might start here and only go halfway down, very easy and gently. You stretch the back of those hamstrings, bend those knees, and then roll back. As you get stronger and more flexible, you go a little further every time. Remember, less today and more tomorrow is the way to go. As you get stronger, you pull down for 10 seconds. Working that stomach muscle, relax that back muscle. After 10 seconds, ease on that control line, bring those elbows down to the knees, and then gently stretch the legs. Bend the knees one more time. Bring the handle back up to about nose height. Again, put it under your finger. Now never jam that handle into the back of your neck. Remember, feel comfortable as you do this exercise. After 10 seconds, ease on that line and move down and through that range of motion. Now the next exercise we're gonna do is for the legs. Because without leg strength, 
You can't walk, run, or ride a bike or play tennis. We take the trainer out of the door. We're going to add a little more resistance on this exercise. We're at one pound. By pushing the indicator in, we're going to push it up and go all the way around one revolution to nine pounds. Take the door snubber and move it out of the way. Now is where you use your training board. Take the training board and slip the training board through the door strap of the trainer. Setting up for this, this exercise is relatively easy. Place the trainer in the middle of the board. Lay the control line out in front of you. Now we're going to use our harness. Take your harness and hold it with the hooks facing down. Place it around your waist. You want to make sure you're on your hips. Don't let this get up on your, on your upper back. Make sure it's on your hips. From here, you're going to take both hooks and you're going to put them through the strap. Now never let those hooks slide through the strap so that it squeezes your waistline. Make sure that those hooks hang right in that left side of the strap. From this position, gently come down and grab the handle and pull it up. From here, we're now going to remove the handle. You want to make sure that there aren't any frays in the rope also. If there's any frays in the rope, make sure you call our office so that we can get you a new one. We're now going to set ourselves up for the leg press position. Now remember, never bend forward and try to lift with your lower back. The motion on this exercise is bending those legs and then moving up, having that strap go across the hips. Now notice how easy I could do that. Anyone at any age could do that exercise. Now if you have a bad knee, you may want to start at this angle so that you don't put any pressure in the knee, but you start to feel the strength building in your quad. As you start to get stronger and more flexible, you move into that squatted position. If you're a skier, move back and forth. Notice how my heart rate is going up. See the stuff just pouring off my forehead. It's called endorphins. It's the gift of athletes. Those of you that want to get in shape, it relieves stress. How to scrub go when you can't buy it. After three of those, we're going to now unhook the hook. And we're going to get ready for our last exercise, which is for your heart. Now we just unhook those hooks, lay our harness down for a second, and let's place the handle back into the trainer. Loosen on that hook. Take your training board and move it out of the way. From here, we're going to put the trainer in the door at waist high position. In the manual, it'll talk about mid-door position. Place that door snubber on the other side of the door, close the door, make sure the door is locked. Because you'll see that if that door isn't locked and it opens, you change rooms quickly with this exercise. Now from here, remember we did the leg press, we put both hooks into the harness. In this exercise, we're only gonna put one hook in the harness. We come back to the short line that is next to the trainer. We are now ready for our resistive aerobics. Now, if you're a walker, you have to go out and walk 35 miles to burn a pound of fat. If you walk up a hill, you only have to go about 18. If you walk up a hill pulling a truck behind you, you only have to go about four. Now, notice how gently I'm doing this exercise. If you haven't gone out for a walk or your ankle, knees, or hips aren't in shape, you have to do it this easy. Do it every day for one minute. At the end of two or three weeks, pick up the pace a little bit. As you pick up that pace, you notice your heart rate is going. Now, don't do it so hard that you can't talk because then you're straining, not training. Run that out nice and easy. As you get to the end of the rope, take the work line off. It is now the control line. We move now to the second repetition. Hook yourself up again. Make sure the door is locked. The hook is secure, and you're now ready for your second motion. Now this is a great exercise, especially for the ladies, for the back part of that thigh. That toe to heel exercise is great. Remember, under every curve is a muscle. The better shape that muscle is in, the better the curve looks. See this stuff just pouring off my forehead? I haven't strained, I've trained. Come back and get ready for your third repetition. And remember, when you first start your program, you wanna do it easy. As you get in better condition, increase the intensity. As you get even in better condition, you move through. Don't try to yank this out of the door, but move for range of motion. I also like to turn, do some sidestepping. You know, we're always riding our bikes forward, we're always running forward, we're always doing our ski machine forward. By doing sideways, we now build our lateral motion. 
As we get older, the number one injury that will plague us is a broken hip from falling sideways. When you finish, take your harness off, set it to the side, remove your trainer from the door. We're gonna dial down the resistance, get it ready for tomorrow. Remember, we were set on nine pounds. We're gonna back it off to the left. One revolution, two revolutions to start. You can even out your handles. You place it in your training bag and you're ready to go. Not so long ago, a popular and convenient myth among the golf community was that physical fitness played no part in a golfer's practice routine. But more recently, we've come to our senses. Players at all skill levels and all ages are discovering that a simple fitness regimen makes you feel better, look better, and allows you to play your best golf. Increased strength can help add those few wanted yards, making that seemingly endless par five reachable in two. Greater endurance can give you the stamina and confidence to play 36 holes in a day without losing energy or concentration. Tonight, 1987 U.S. Amateur Champion, three-time PGA Tour winner Billy Mayfair, and fitness coach Jim Warren are here to show you how proper and regular fitness training can help you find your best body and your best game on Academy Live. The Golf Channel and the PGA of America present the Golf Channel Academy Live with your host, Peter Kessler. Welcome to Academy Live. If you rush to get to the golf course because you're afraid that the buffet table may be closed before your tea time arrives, then tonight's show might be for you because there's another way to get ready for a round of golf other than having the cholesterol special to start your day. Is that not true, Billy Mayfair? It sure is true, Peter. It's great, great to be here. Great to have you here. How are you, Jim? Hi, Peter. Thanks for having us. Is it true, and I can tell from looking at you, that you are a believer in fitness, but are recreational golfers starting to believe that there's actually a correlation between pain-free, successful golf um, and playing your best golf? Oh, Peter, with the competitiveness of the weekend golfer, they all understand that you don't play golf to get in shape, we ought to be in shape to play golf. And what are you seeing in your travels as a result of that from the average 15 or 20 handicapper? Well, a lot of them are finding that their neck, shoulder, and back pain can go away. And instead of being uh, crippled all week long, they're able to get in shape. So when their players get on the tee on, Mon or on Sunday, they're able to say, hey, I'm going to press you. I'll press you back. Let's go. <laughs> We're starting to see players in their 40s and in their 50s playing the best golf of their life. We see Tom Watson at nearly age 50 hitting the ball better than he ever has before. How much do you attribute to these guys playing great golf as well as your own the time that they spend in training at the golf course, in the training center, and away from the golf course on their own? Well, they spend a lot more time. We spend a lot more time in the trailer. Uh, we're eating a lot better. We're, we're watching our diet. We're doing a lot of different things now than we were maybe 10, 15 years ago on tour because we know that when we turn 50, we got another tour to go to out there. So everyone was really trying to stay in shape. And they're also trying to stay in better shape so that we don't get injured out there, too. Now, one of the things that both of you believe in strongly is this uh, way to get in shape called the trainer. Tell me why you like it, and be kind enough as you do so to demonstrate exactly what it is and how it works. Okay. Well, Peter, the trainer originated with the Apollo space program, went to the moon on Apollo 7, 8, and 11. It's been used by the greatest players in the world. And what we've done is adapted that training system to a fit for golf type of program. And it can dial up from one ounce up to 600 pounds of resistance. Now we're only gonna use a couple pounds, and Billy's gonna show a little bit of the workout that we use for golf. It's as simple as putting the trainer in the top of the door and closing the door, and we have our full fitness facility now. It's all ready to go right now. Fairly simple. Yep. All right, Billy, one, let's do the overhead stretch, the first okay. stretch that we would show any any person. And the, re the way we came up with this, Peter, is most of us throughout the day are sitting at the desk 
or we're on the phone. So at the end of the day, instead of standing straight up and down, we're kind of standing with our shoulders slumped over. Now, isn't that the move that he usually makes as he gets ready to reach for the bacon at the buffet table? Well, it used to be, but anymore, it's a move I try to make every morning before I even go out to the golf course. Just you, a little bit of stretching after I get out of the shower and, and get warmed up and uh, just, just to help me along so I don't hurt myself at all when I'm warming up uh, on, the, on the practice range. Do you do a structured few minutes or is it a random kind of a thing that you do every day? I, try, I really try to do a structured thing before I go out to the golf course. I think it's really important. I may do a little bit more when I get back uh, from the golf course in the hotel room and all that. It just depends on how I feel and, and how tired I am. What else can he do with this? to whip himself into shape and to simulate some of the movements that he'll make in his best golf swing. And you know the the old saying of uh, working out an hour a day, let's face it, if we're, as golfers what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to go to the tee and we're going to hit golf balls for an hour. So one of the greatest exercises that we can do with the trainer is actually duplicating the golf swing. And this can be at any level, at any range of motion, by putting the uh, left hand front and having our right hand behind, we not only can stretch our left side, and this is important for Billy because he hits the ball with his right hand and so has a little bit of strain in that right side, and so by strengthening the left side, we're able to balance his lower back. Without injury, we're able to stay in the tour. So many people who uh, decide that they're going to exercise and put themselves in shape tend to overdo it initially. How can you ease yourself into a program with the trainer, get benefit, but not feel like you've had to change your life completely because most of us aren't good about making 180 degree changes instantly? That's absolutely right. I think the time frame. That, know, absolutely, the time frame. There's really no chance of getting injured with this. And this also helps your flexibility a great deal, which is so important out there. You've talked a lot, Billy, about uh, Butch Harmon's discussion of the one fast, effective, speedy moment in Tiger Swing and how the trainer can help all of us develop that. Would you tell me about that? Well, yeah. One of the, one of the things that Butch has always said why Tiger hits the ball so far is because it's the power that he gets from top of his shoulders through the ball and back out again, from pretty much from this point here to this point here. And this is exactly what the trainer does. It just kind of gets you a little bit of tension right here and then just kind of releases and lets you really work on that side on your left side, which is what makes Tiger so strong when he goes through the ball. Well, I think all of us would like to be able to do that. If you would, you can order the trainer, and you can do so by calling 800-530-6909. Again, 800-530-6909. During the course of the evening, Billy and Jim will be here. Billy will take your calls on the golf swing. Jim will take your calls on what you can do, what you can do to improve your body to make your best golf swing. And we'll do all of that when we come back. You want to work with the fellows? Give us a call. 1-800-842-9987. That's 1-800-842-9987 to work with Billy Mayfair and Jim Warren tonight on your body and on your golf game on Academy Live. So where should we start? Anywhere you want to. I'm talking about the Billy on the, uh, who's a viewer. Hello, Billy. Hi. How you doing? Pretty good. How about you? Very well, thank you, sir. What should we do together? Uh, I was just wondering, um, when I'm in the weight room lifting, which muscles I could uh, work on and which uh, weight, weight equipment I could use to get more distance off the tee? Well, actually, Billy, you definitely want to concentrate on the left side of your body. So when you move and you take one of the st weight stacks, make sure you use a, a, just a little bit of weight and you move through your range of motion because too much too soon is just as bad as too little too late. Hope that helps you. All but, right, thanks a lot. But okay. which now, is, suppose somebody is in reasonably good shape and there's no lower back pain and they've been taking good care of themselves, which muscle specific groups do you want to work first and how often to start to develop the kind of flexibility and strength that will literally increase the distance you can hit a golf ball? Well, with Billy's swing, he likes working that right side. So you're going to take this weight stack and you're just going to work the actual range of motion. So when you take your stance and your swing, what you, you get in front of the weight stack, make your move without any resistance. Then grab the weight stack, set it on the lowest amount, and move through that range of motion about three sets of ten, or at home with your rubber band, 
or with your trainer, whatever fitness system you choose, make sure you're doing your exact range of motion. Too much resistance in a bad motion will not transfer to uh, adding distance to your, your drives. Is this an everyday routine or something that works best every other day? Every single day. We brush our teeth every day. Speak we have to make sure we <laughs> Let's go ahead and talk to a sure year do. old Bo who's calling from Tennessee. How are you, Bo? I'm all right. How are you, Peter? We're doing fine. Thanks. What can we work on? Yeah, um, I have a question for Jim. Um, go ahead, Bo. I take um, four clubs when I start at the tee, and I will take them up, and I swing with them for about ten times to try to get, make the clubs have a lighter feel. But um, it's a lot tougher to hit now that I'm trying that, so what do you think I should do? Well, I think you ought to do what Billy said earlier, take a little shorter uh, step you know, or short, shorten down on the club and just take one club. And when you take the one club and you make your motion, just move it nice and easy. And as you get better, then extend. Don't go right to four clubs immediately because remember, you have cold muscles. As soon as you have a cold muscle, it's like a cold rubber band. You're trying to stretch that and it'll snap. So start with one club, choke down on it, swing it nice and easy, move to two clubs, then move it. Uh, you know, move to the edge of the clubs, mm -hmm. and you'll find that you won't stress your muscles as much right off the bat. Uh, okay? All uh, right. Don't, don't go away yet, Bo. Let me ask you a question. Yeah. You, you know, go, we've, got, we've got Billy here. Let's, let's talk about your golf swing for a minute. What part of your game needs the most work that Billy might be able to help you with? Uh, probably my uh, driving. What's wrong with it? What's wrong with it? I don't hit it real far. Well, I'm very short, and I slice a lot. What should we do slice about that, Billy? Well, if you're slicing a lot, obviously when you slice the ball, it's going to take a lot of the distance off right away. I think that something you might want to do is try to strengthen your grip, and that's easily by just simply moving your thumb from the top of the club maybe to the side, which would strengthen the hands a little bit, make the grip like that, which, is, which would give you a stronger grip. Another thing you might want to try is actually closing the head of your, the, the club face just a little bit more because what you're doing is when you're slicing it you're coming into the ball at a steep angle and the club face is open that's why probably most of your divots are going right to left and then the ball's going out and then just slicing real big if you keep that club face just a little bit more closed it'll help the ball straighten up a little bit those are just a few that maybe easier things that will do and you also will find when you start hitting the ball straighter maybe even hooking it you will get that distance back that's good to know, especially at his age. He's got his whole life ahead of him. <laughs> Let's go ahead and talk to Alvin in Illinois. How are you, Alvin? I'm doing great. Thanks for taking my call, guys. It's a pleasure. What should we do tonight? Well, Peter, the problem that I'm having is I've only been playing for about a month and a half. Just shot a 91, actually, over the weekend. So I don't think you need it. any help. Any help at all. No, we, might, we could use a little help from you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very excited about the game, but in my practicing, I noticed that I get a pain on my right side on my rib cage. And I, I'm wondering if you guys think it might be related to golf because I definitely feel it when I'm swinging um, through the ball. Whenever you have pain, first thing you do is add ice. Okay. All right. So you're going out and you're playing a round of golf and your muscles aren't used to it. Billy gets to play four, five, six hours a day. Yeah. And, he, and after a round, he still ices down. Uh, same thing okay. in any sport. When a, when a player gets finished playing a game, what's the first thing you see him do on the sideline? I sit down. So take care of yourself. You know, there's, some, uh, there's a time when you need therapy and there's a time when you need exercise and you're out there playing that game, uh, straining those muscles, you need to do a little therapy at the end and okay. I think that'll help you. And Alvin, another thing you might want to try is when you do go to the range, don't go right to the driver. Uh, it sounds like if, if your right side's hurting when you, while you're out there playing it, you probably pulled something or hurt yourself while you're swinging or while you're warming up. So be sure you really warm up good, take a couple clubs, swing on both sides, and then go from the sandwich up to the driver. Don't go right to the driver. And if you ever have a problem and it continues on, make sure you see your doctor. Absolutely. You know, At which to. point does the ice start to do damage? How long do you leave it on for? 20 minutes, and that's it. Put it on for 20 minutes and... Take it off and, and don't it. put it on again. Right, and the way you want to make an ice pack is use ice. Don't use those cold packs because the cold packs will, will, will start to burn the, will skin. burn the skin. Make sure you use ice, put it in a towel, crush it up, fold the towel over, and just put it right on the, on the sore spot. If you have an elbow, a shoulder, a neck, a knee, anywhere, just put that on, 20 that minutes. Or those Ziploc bags. Uh, right. Those freezer bags are awesome. I carry around those all the time. There you go. It won't drip all over you. Yeah. Let's go ahead and talk to Tom in New York. What's going on, Tom? Hi. How are you? Good. What's going on with your golf Good game? Good Peter, Billy, Jim. Hi, Hi Tom. Tom. How are you? Um, I got I to gotta hand it to you guys for uh, 
getting all the exercises and doing all the warm-ups and all, but I think probably 80% of the guys just jump out of the car and go to the club and uh, That's for sure. start playing golf without the exercises. A lot of them don't have time. Um, I'm a PCS member, and uh, I've been playing with golf clubs for, oh, five or six years. Uh -huh. And a friend of mine that I play with has a very bad back problem, and he could get about nine holes, and then he was done for the day. So we worked on uh, trying to get him a little more uh, limber. And what I did was I took uh, his irons and made them all the same length. They're all of the length of his three iron. Now, uh, uh, the problem there was, of course, the lie angle. So we had to change that. But he's swinging a lot slower, a lot easier. He's getting good control and good distance. And uh, he's good for 36 holes a day now. Really? Wow. So uh, uh, there are some... Uh, there are some disadvantages to it, of course, is getting used to hitting the long club, like uh, like a 50-inch driver. You know, you can't step right up and hit that well. No. Right. Well, but, you know, there's a, you're always going to find exceptions in anything that you do, but remember, there's a difference between treatment, therapy, and preparing your physical body for that activity. And you're right, technology is spectacular, but don't forget to take care of yourself. Absolutely. And Tommy, I want to remember too is that. When you do have problems like that, you know, flexibility, getting your flexibility as strong as you possibly can can really help a lot. And then after you get the flexibility to go on a little bit of a, some type of weight program to make yourself stronger, it will really help you in your endurance and all that too. Absolutely. When Jack and Arnold were in their prime years ago, Gary Player, the third member of that triumvirate, was the guy who really stayed in great shape always and weighs the same thing now at age 61 that he weighed at age 21. Is it never too late, regardless of your age, to begin to put your body back in shape? I'm with you. Absolutely. And as we get older, it's probably even more important. You know, we're going to be living longer than we've ever lived before, and it's the old saying, if I knew I was going to live that long, I'd have taken I'd have better, taken better care, care, sure. care of myself. <laughs> and so now, because we are living that long, uh, we're looking for any way that we can take care of ourselves. But again, too much too soon is just as bad as too little too late. But never too late to start. Absolutely. Okay. At any age. And especially on our tour because we got, you know, we, you know, guys are on the senior tour saying, boy, if I was 30 years old and knew we had the senior tour when I turned 50, boy, I would have really stayed in a lot better shape. So Absolutely. Even, even the young guys out on tour now know that to stay in, in, in physical shape, to, to ride the bike, to, to lift weights, to be flexible and all that's so important because we, you can have such a long career now out there on the PJ Tour. Hopefully. Hopefully. That's let's it. go ahead and take a short break and let's take a look at a fellow who's been enjoying a tremendous start to his career on the PGA Tour, three-time winner, Billy Mayfair. anything about the two of them getting married on the 18th hole and just to show you what a good sport his wife is he was making the turn they just they did it very quickly on the 18th green he went right to the first tee let's go ahead and talk to Jim in Florida hello Jim hey Peter how you doing very well thank hi, you Jim. hi Billy how's it going hi, great Jim. Jim how are you oh I'm doing pretty good thanks um Peter first of all I just want to say it's a great show um, thank you I don't know how much money you saved me in lessons and everything you guys are great really <laughs> well, but anyways two quick questions one for Jim one for Billy Jim um, I'm a left-handed golfer first of all part of the uh, silent majority ma minority I guess there's not okay. too many of us out there um, and I seem to be having a problem with my left shoulder um, when I'm swinging through and everything uh, truth I don't do a lot of exercises on the left side um, uh, and I, I'd like to know some warm-up exercises that might help me with that and uh, Okay, Jim, so what's happening is you're getting some soreness in this arm? Yeah, exactly, right, right there, right where you're grabbing it. Right, right up in the front? It almost feels like a nerve or something. It's, it's really like pinching it after I get off the range. Oh, absolutely. Right? I could, right uh, yeah, I could put Billy right down right here. It's a very tender spot. What you want to make sure is, first of all, you want to check with your doctor, uh -huh. okay, because you, you want to make sure that there's not a major injury. Once they give you uh, the go-ahead, you want to start to do exercises where you keep your elbow in and rotate out. Now, if you'll notice, Billy will pull against my hand where I'll hold back and, and create a little bit of resistance. Go ahead, Bill, and pull through, and that'll start to strengthen in here. 
The other exercise you'll want to do is when you bring your arm up, you're going to want to rotate back. And so if you take your club before you, you play and put the handle into your hand, and with the other hand, grab the middle of the club, keeping your elbow steady, you're able to rotate back and stretch that uh, joint out. Okay? okay. But remember, add some ice. Put ice on it if it's sore and if it's stiff. Okay. And, and don't try to do it all in one day, Jim. Ex Whatever you do, don't try exactly. to do it in one day. I think you have one more question for us. No? no. Okay, he's okay. gone. Let's go ahead and see what Bill in Indiana wants to work on. Hello, Bill. Hi, how are you? Very well, thanks. Now, you guys have saved me a lot of money in, uh, in uh, lessons, too. Well, we got you good and confused, have we? <laughs> Um, my question is, a couple of years ago I had uh, basically messed up my uh, uh, rotator cuff in my right shoulder. And okay. uh, I've been coming back pretty good with it now, but uh, occasionally when I have start swinging a lot, I, I feel a pain basically in it. I do have a pretty long, you know, swing all the way around. I get a long okay. reach with it, and it just... It, starts hurting after a while. Is there anything else I can do when I'm in the gym? I, I don't know if I should try to bulk up and, and lose uh, flexibility. Now, are you doing bench presses? Uh, occasionally. Okay, because it hurts your shoulder, right? Right. Yeah, because when you, again, you had the same problem, okay, that uh, Jim had. He had it up in the front part of the shoulder? Right. Okay. When you're doing your bench presses, what's happening is you're starting to, to uh, strain the, uh, the front part of your shoulder. Whenever you have an injury, the first thing you do is see your doctor. Second thing, always ice it down. Have you been heating it or icing it? Uh, well, neither, okay. basically. Okay, there's, there's one of the problems. So you have to understand the difference between exercise and building and therapy. When you have pain or strain, you have to use therapy. Now, once you have the therapy and you get rid of the pain, again, the exercises you want to start to do, rotator cuff, all right, and this is something that we concentrate on in our program because every exercise does the same thing. But you have to make sure you use variable resistance. As you get stronger, you add a little bit more. One of the other exercises I think, Bill, you and I talked about, before you even go into the gym, while your shower is warming up, you can do these little bitty exercises just to work on the shoulder. Now, don't get your hand up above your, your uh, shoulder, okay. but nice and gently to get that, uh, the, the bursa sacs warmed up. Okay. Yeah, Bill, and that's, that's one thing that's so good about the trainer is, is because you can be at home, you can use it for five minutes, two minutes, whatever you want to use it, loosen up and go right to the golf course and you tee off. That will really will help your upper shoulders. And at any resistance because you're going to use it easy first, then you're going to go with a little more resistance as you get better. Plus it helps your flexibility too. Got it. I like the warm-up for the shower exercise. You like that, that one? That lift your arms a couple of times, a couple of inches, and I am exhausted. Let's okay. go ahead and talk to Joey in Illinois. Hello, Joey. Hi, Peter. Um, <laughs> it's a thrill to be on such a great show. Well, it's a thrill to have you with us. Well, thank you. Um, I, uh, Billy, um, I don't know if uh, you remember me, but uh, I used to uh, be with you would be with you a lot at the at uh, True North on the uh, putting greens and. Um, did you did you used to work up there at True North, Joey? Or yeah, I I I used to uh, practice uh, just Joey winners. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, I had a uh, question and um, a tip I wanted to ask of, ask of you. Um, okay, sure. Um, well, I just wondered what you were working on to get uh, your game in the form it was uh, two years ago when you had those uh, excellent years. Because um, as I've seen on the tour, um, you're uh, getting back to your old form somewhat. Well, we're starting to. I think that I think my biggest problem has been. This past year, as I've just gotten a little bit too mechanical, I've um, I've gotten away from just getting up there, taking my grip, swinging it, just going out there and playing golf, and trying to you know, and I've gotten into maybe too much of making perfect golf swings, trying to hit perfect golf shots, and trying to make every putt out there. It's not going to happen. Uh, I've gotten a lot more into just going out there and swinging the club, like I said, and and getting back into my routine. That was what was so great for me in in 90, uh, 95. I just went out there, I did my routine every shot. And I just let it happen. And I've gotten kind of away from that. But this, about this last month, though, I've really gotten back into my routine, hitting every shot the same way. And, and I think it's starting to come through. And, and hopefully this next week, I'll start playing better. And he owes it all to Academy Live. We're going to take a very short break. And as we leave you, we want to give you the number for the trainer one more time.
That's 800-530-6909, 800-530-6909 to order the trainer. Quinton in California, what's going on with your golf game? Hello. Hello, Quinton. Oh, sorry, I didn't see uh, you caught me off guard. That's right. It's uh, like when you call somebody and they answer and you forget who you called, right? Well, it's a senior moment. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Quinn. I, I play the senior series, so you have to forgive me. I know, so we're all in the same boat. Don't you worry about it. All right. Uh, Jim, this yes. question is more specific to you. Uh, in 1971, I lost the radial head in my left arm. Oh, that had to hurt. That was a motorcycle wreck. Okay. And as an aftermath in 94, they removed the ulnar wrist bone in okay. the left because it got so large and was crushing the bones in my fingers. Okay. And I've been playing the mini tours for a long time, and the senior series has been good to me. And I'm having trouble with frozen shoulder. The muscles behind the upper part of my left shoulder behind my armpit Okay. have atrophied, right. and I get radiation pain all the way up to the top of the shoulder and down the arm. And my physical therapist that I've been going to for the last two and a half years have not been able to help me. Can so, you help me? Well, you know, the, uh, you have a construction problem, and you, you're probably doing the same exercises that we would recommend, uh, the overhead stretch. Do you do any of that? Yeah, I do it in the shower. Okay. What about the uh, rotator cuff stuff? Yes, I do that okay. as well. Now, are you actually doing duplication of motion? In other words, taking your uh, actual stance and moving through your swing to work on stretching those muscles up in your upper back. I don't do that necessarily because I hit practice balls every day. Okay, but remember, you know, do you, you hit practice balls to get in shape or should we get that muscle in shape to hit practice balls? You follow? Yes. So what you want to do, for example, when we were showing the trainer earlier, the reason that it's so good is because we can actually set ourselves holding the bottom of the handle and stretch those muscles which seem to be tightening up on you and freezing. And that way you get that little isometric stretch. And I by, gotcha. by using just a little bit of resistance, you're then able to work through that range of motion without straining those muscles, which uh, would make you tired before you went to the range to hit balls. See, one of the worst things that we could do is give Billy a, a training system that would make him stiff and sore. And that's where a lot of the pros have used the trainer, especially in season. Okay, Does that, hopefully that'll help you. Well, thank you so much. Okay, Quentin. Thanks. Billy and I would have been in trouble trying to give that answer. Let's go oh, ahead yeah. and talk to Paul in Massachusetts. How are you, Paul? Uh, good, Peter. Thanks for being with us. Uh, I finally got through. Uh, compliments on your show. I uh, picked up a lot of tips myself. Well, thanks for your persistence. I appreciate your call. And uh, my question is that I have no problem hitting my you know, driver and my higher irons, but I run into a lot of difficulty hitting... Uh, I'd say A through pitch and wedge. I, I have a real difficult time shaking the ball. And I'm wondering how I can... Uh, well, Bill, I think that's yours. Shanking the ball. Yeah. Oh, what a ball. Yeah, oh, no. <laughs> Beautiful word that is. Oh, Thanks for God. bringing that up. I'm sure everybody um, loves to hear that. It, what it sounds like to me is if, if you're hitting your long irons and your driver good and you're having problems with your short irons, probably what you're doing is just standing too far from the ball. Uh, you want to make sure that by the, when you get down to the 8-iron and the 7-iron that you get a little bit closer to the ball. Uh, if you're way out here like this when you're trying to hit a driver, all you're going to do is you're going to come and you're going to hit the hosel of the club because you're trying to get back to the ball. You're too far away from it. Uh, you're probably hitting a lot of when you hit those shots. You're probably hitting them thin too, aren't you? Um, also, too, I have a problem, Billy. Like, well, one, one friend gave me a tip. He said, play the ball back in your stance. What about ball position? Uh, I think with, a little lost there. Well, I think, uh, you know, it, it depends on how you want to hit the shot, but I, mo the main thing you want to do is have it off your front ankle. Uh, your front left ankle would be the best place to, to put it. Uh, if you do that and you stand a little bit closer to the ball, you've got a lot better chance of hitting the shots a lot more solid. Uh, the only time you want to start moving away from the ball is when you get to the longer clubs because the shafts are longer then. But, uh, you know, there's other shots when you hit the wedges, you want to hit them a little bit lower and all that, you might want to move it back in your stance. But just to hit a normal 8-iron or a 9-iron into a green, 120, 130 yards, I move just a little bit closer to the ball. 
uh, put it just off you know, your front uh, left ankle and just make a normal driver type of swing. And, it, and you should be hitting a lot more solid. I think you've, put, you've probably gotten a little bit too far away from the ball. Well, that's, e that's easy enough to do. We're going to take a very short break. When we come back, Billy and I will be back. We're going to let Jim go. He's going to go ahead and whip this uh, body into shape, and you can see he really needs the work. Thank Thanks for being Peter. with us tonight. Thank Thanks you. for all the help. All right. Thank Billy. you. We'll we will be you right later. back. Don't go away. Carter wants to work on with Billy Mayfair. Go ahead, Rick. Hey, good evening, Peter. How are you? Very well. Nice to be with you. Thanks. Uh, how you doing, Bill? Good, Rick. How are you? Good. Uh, listen, I got a couple quick questions for you, Bill. Okay. Um, I got a couple swing flaws, and I know I have them, and I just am having trouble correct them. Okay. Um, on my on my uh, back swing, um, I noticed that I'm uh, um, delofting the club head. Okay. So instead of to like that three quarter position where it should be, you know, up and down. Uh huh. You know what I mean? Yep. I'm kind of I'm kind of delofting it, and when I get to the top, um, you know, I'm I'm not square at the top. And then the other thing I have is my left wrist at the top. Uh huh. No matter what I do, I can't stop cupping. Um, 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 cupping that left wrist at the top. Okay. And uh, from what I've been told, I'm losing a lot of power with my shots because I'm um, I'm cupping that left wrist. Yeah, yeah. That would that would definitely lose some power and some distance by doing that. Uh, what you might be doing if if you're if you're cupping it when you get on top, it sounds like to me that maybe you've got the club up way up over your head or you're taking it way back here almost like John Daly does. Um, for John that's great because he's got enough club head power to bring it all the way through but for the most players they don't have that. Um, something, I, Two things I think that would really help you a lot Rick right away is is one when you're swinging the golf club when you get it on top get a, get, get a golf glove sometime and paint the thumb red. Get a red marker and paint the, your, the whole glove on your thumb red and grip the club and then when you get it on top Look and see where that red part of that thumb is. It should be pointing straight down. If it is, that means your club's parallel and you're ready to bring it down. A lot of people get like this, or, they, or like if you're cupping it, you're getting up there like this instead of just having the thumb straight down. The other thing I would do and that you might want to start even before you do that is go to the range and hit little half shots. Now, I say this a lot because I think this is one of the most important drills that a person can do. It's just get a bucket of balls and take a seven iron out and just hit little little tiny half shots to get that uh, rhythm going and all that. And I think that will stop the, the deceleration or the de, um, lofting. Uh, de lofting of the club. Plus, it will also wor work on your release. And when you get that release going, you're going to get the uh, shots to start turning over, and they'll go further right away. Let's talk a little bit about the positions at the top. Because if we think about a player like Fred Couples, who has a strong grip where you can see most of the back of his <laughs> on top of the club. Mm -hmm. well, when he gets to the top, he must have a slightly cupped position Slight cupped as position. a function of his grip. Mm -hmm. But if, if you've ever seen Freddie, when he gets it on top, if you see him on cup, his, his club usually doesn't go all the way back to parallel, and it is up a little bit high. But Freddie is so strong, and he's, and he's such a great athlete that he can drop it right back in position and then fires through the ball. But if for the rest of us, if we have a neutral grip, we should be close to a flat wrist at the top. As, yes. But if we're going to err, wouldn't you want to err on the side of slightly cupped rather than slightly bowed? Yes, because it'd be a lot. It's a, it, once you get the club, if you get the club up on top and you can at least get it coming down towards the ball on line, you're going to have a lot better chance. And if you get it flat, now you're really in a bad position. You've got really no chance to get back at it. And that's when you're going to start hitting these big boomerang slices. He talked a little bit about de-lofting his club face going back, which I took to mean that he was shutting the club shutting face the club down. down. When you do that, a lot of bad things can happen, right? You oh, can get yeah. your weight over to your left side. Mm -hmm. You get all handsy and armsy. Your head, your body, everything moves ahead of you. And once you get ahead of the ball, you've got no chance of ever correcting because the swing moves too fast to ever get back to the ball and get back to the position that you want. And like he said, he said he was losing a lot of distance because if he's ahead of the ball, there's nowhere for the arms to go. And if your arms are out of the picture, the ball can't go anywhere because that's where you get your power from is from your arm swing. So if he was going to err on both of those things, you'd rather see him err with a club face that's opening, opening. and a position that's slightly cupped versus slightly bowed at the top. Bowed on top. Slightly in both cases. Yeah. Okay. Let's go ahead. Sorry to take so much time with that. Let's talk to our friend Preston, who's 14 years old, <coughs> calling from South Carolina. Hello, Preston. Uh, thanks for taking my call. Great to be with you. Okay. Uh, I'm having problems with my hook. Mm-hmm. And 
I don't know what to do. Tell us a little bit more about it. What kind of player are you, Preston? What, what's your handicap? Uh, probably about a 30. Now, are you hooking the ball with all your clubs? No, just my driver. Does it start left and go left or start right and go back to center or left of center? No, it starts out pretty straight. And then just kind of dives left? Uh, yeah. Okay, well, Preston, let me give you a little hint. And I think one of the reasons why maybe you're hooking your driver and maybe not your shorter irons or your middle irons is uh, when people hook the ball, what they do is usually if, if they have a pretty good golf swing, and Preston, it sounds like even though you're 30 handicap, you sound like you know pretty much what you're doing with your golf swing and everything. What they like to do is that you, you like to, people who hook the ball re-grip the club. When they get on top, they let go with these two fingers on their left hand. And this is something that I do a lot in the pro-ams when, when I get guys out there who just hook the ball like crazy. It's a simple, easy fix. And that is to get a golf tee. And what you want to do is you want to put the golf tee in right between under these two fingers right here. You want to place it. Um, I don't know, I think I got a tee here in my bag. I hope it's a golf channel tee, Billy. <laughs> uh, Just want you to know that everybody who walks out of here with a golf channel tee wins the next week. <laughs> well, I better get one then real quick. <laughs> or a couple. Yeah, I think one of the, you know, if you just stand up over the ball and you hit balls with this tee right here underneath your grip like that. Now, what you want to do is you want to make sure that you keep that tee in your grip the whole time. You will not hook the ball. I can guarantee you, Preston, if you do this, you will not hook it. Uh, there's a lot of things I'm maybe not guaranteed on, but if you keep the tee in these two fingers right here through your entire swing, you will not hook the ball. And, and what that does, when people hook it, they let go with those two fingers, it closes the face real quick, and boom, the ball shoots out to the left. When I tell people to, be, you know, to tighten their left fingers, their two light, uh, fingers right here, they do that at the start, but when they get on top, they let go again. So what the tee does is allows you through the entire swing to keep that pressure right there. And what you're probably going to feel, you know, the first one you take it back, the tee may go flying out of your hands. Right then you know that you're probably letting go with your grip. And remember, if the tee goes out of your hands, you must catch it and make the swing and before the it swing. hits the ground. <laughs> We're going to take a short break. We'll be right back with Billy Mayfair and you right after this on Academy Live. From South Carolina, our friend OJ. How are you tonight? Fine, Peter. Good to talk to you and Billy. Hi, nice OJ. to have you with us. How you doing? Fine, thank you. I've been trying to reach you for some time and finally got on. All right, great. Uh, what can I help you with? Well, first of all, I want to tell Peter that uh, I think that the Golf Channel is one of the best things that's ever happened to the game of golf. Well, thank you very much. You I will pass that along. Even my wife is hooked on it now, Peter. Well, that's saying a lot. Uh, you're, that's for sure. <laughs> I know um, she's not a golfer. Uh, no, she's a golfer, but uh, she just didn't want to monopolize TV time with the Golf Channel, but I can't help it. It's just so good. That's a great marriage. Congratulations. Great marriage there, yep. Thank you. 47 years worth. Uh, great. Billy, I'm 70 years old, and my, uh, my game, I've, I've increased my handicap to 14 now. Uh -huh. And um, I've, I've never been a long hitter, but uh, I've lost a lot of distance. In recent years, my backswing is uh, quite a bit shorter, not quite as bad as Doug Sanders was, but not <laughs> far from that. I need to increase my club head speed, and uh, any tips you can give me along those lines, I certainly will appreciate it. Well, OJ, the first thing that comes to mind is, do you have graphite shafts in your clubs? Yes, I do. I have the senior shafts. Okay, that's great. A um, couple things I would, uh, to help you with your club head speed, I would uh, definitely... Um, Something I would do is, is right away is maybe put the ball a little bit further up in your stance, more off your front foot. You probably have, I don't know how far back you have your ball in your stance, but if you're, if sounds like to me, probably if you're losing some distance, you probably got it too far back in your stance. The first thing you might want to do is allow the ball a little bit more off your front foot, even off your front left toe. That will allow you a little bit more time to just generate a little bit more club head speed to get to the ball. You might, the other thing I said is you might want to do is just to strengthen your grip. Uh, anything that helps the ball turn over faster to get it going out there to the right to left to get that overspin on it. Uh, you're from Virginia, I know that it rains there a lot, so you probably don't get a lot of roll, but uh, if you get the ball, the more you get the ball turning over right to left, the further the ball is going to go. So the first thing I do is maybe put the ball a little bit off your front left foot, so you have it there, so it allows you to make a turn and get a little bit more club head speed before you get to the ball. The other thing I would maybe suggest to you is, is to regrip the club. If you have, if your grip's like this, or probably like this, to get the left hand just a little bit more over to make it a little bit stronger. 
and put your right hand back on just like you normally do, and immediately you're going to feel like the face is going to be closed. But when you bring the club head through, it should be back to square and it should be all right. Uh, what this will allow you to do is hit the ball down a little bit more. It will it should fly off the club, and it should be hooking a lot more too, and that will allow the ball to go a little bit further. Um, by doing this, will also increase your club head speed. Uh, it should make your swing a little bit quicker and all that, but still being able to control the ball. So, uh, OJ, I, the two things I'd definitely suggest to you is now that you do have the graphite shafts, which I think are, are great, um, is to maybe put the ball a little bit more back in your off your front foot of your stance to strengthen your grip a little bit more and to just make sure that when you do swing it, you swing out more because the ball is a little bit more forward and that should allow the ball to, the club at speed to gain a little bit more speed through the ball and get out a little bit further. Mm, that sounds like it's got a lot of potential for great excitement. <laughs> Let's go ahead and talk to Brian in Virginia. How are you, Brian? I'm fine. What should we work on tonight? Well, I'd like to know, um, when, you, when you go up and address the ball and you make a couple practice swings, and you feel really good about your swing, but when you actually get up to hit the ball, you don't make a follow through. Uh, what What are you doing wrong? Uh, well, Brian, are you are you visualizing the shot going up on the green, or are you just feeling good over the shot before you hit it? Um, I, I'm not sure. I, you know, I feel good when I make the practice swings, but mm -hmm. it's it's kind of a I don't know. It's like somebody's watching you or something, and when you get right up to hit the ball, you just, you know, totally fail. Okay. Uh, well, let me give you a couple suggestions. They're not really fundamentals. Uh, if you feel good with your practice swings and all that, let's, mm -hmm. let's start a routine right away. Okay. Now, when you get on the range um, tomorrow, if you want to take two practice swings, stand up over the ball and swing it right away. However you want to do a routine, let's start some type of routine so that your practice swings now turn into your, into your swings. Um, when you're hitting the golf shot. I think that people, you know, you're probably relaxed, you're not thinking about it at all, and you're just doing your practice swings. Now you all of a sudden you get over the ball and you go, oh my goodness, this is, this, you know, I've got to, I got to make this swing, I got to make it perfect and all that. Mm -hmm. And all you want to do with your, uh, with your uh, shot when you hit the ball is just make it just like your practice swing. So an easy way to do that is to start some type of routine, and that can start on the driving range. And like I said, there's, there's no simple way, there's no one routine. It's got to be what's ever best for you, Brian. Uh, if you want to take two practice swings and stand up right up to the ball, sit it down and hit it right away, that'd be a great suggestion. Uh, you might want to get back behind the ball like this, take a couple practice swings like this. All, all of a sudden, now you feel good. You walk right up to the ball, and then you just and you go right away. Um, you know, anytime I really don't think see anything that I can tell you in your golf swing or anything like that. When people have problems and they feel like they're making good practice swings or, and feel good over the ball and they're not doing it. Usually it's between their ears more than anything else, and by doing a routine, it just lets you forget about trying to hit the shot and just go out there and just doing it. You know, I know that one of Jack Nicklaus's swing thoughts has been historically to complete his back swing mm -hmm. so that he will make a full uninterrupted swing. For the recreational golfer, it might be to complete your through swing. So many players are ball bound mm -hmm. and, and, and hit conscious as opposed to letting it get in the way. Right. What about the idea of making sure that you have a good, good full, ball. finished, balanced swing so that even if you hit a rotten shot, you sure looked good because yeah. you made a full swing at the golf ball as opposed to something where it looks like you're digging for oil down digging in front of your oil. feet. Yeah, yeah you obviously you always want to have a good finish and all that. And like I said, again, that might just be from doing a routine where every time you hit the shot, you make the swing, and now you're finishing high. No matter how the ball goes or anything like that, you're always going to finish high on your back swing. Um, that that could be part of your routine, like I was trying to say. Also, um, Bobby Jones's dad used to make practice swings, and he'd say, "What's wrong with that swing?" And Bob Jones said to him, "Nothing. Use it sometime. It's different than the one that you, most of us use over the golf ball." Over the golf ball. Yep. Let's go ahead and take a short break. We'll come back. We'll spend a few more minutes with Billy Mayfair. Don't go away. You know, we opened the show by talking about the trainer. Is this the whole package to carry around with you? Yep, this is uh, what I carry when I'm on the tour. Um, it's real, real lightweight. You just kind of throw everything right here in this bag here. And uh, you throw it in the suitcase, and, and off you go. Um, it's, it's very lightweight. It's easy to pack. And uh, this is all you have to put in your suitcase. It's great. OK, now we have the trainer. We've whipped ourselves into shape. But the thing about golf is, particularly for new people just starting the game, is how hard it is to play your best golf all the time. 
very briefly, let's use the example of Davis Love. He misses the cut the week before mm -hmm. and then wins the PGA. In a couple of sentences, what's the lesson to be learned? Well, the lesson obviously is to, is to learn is, is to never give up. Uh, you know, Davis was under a tremendous amount of pressure. He withdrew from, from uh, Peter Jacobs' tournament in Oregon. He wanted to concentrate to make the Ryder Cup team. He went to the Buick, missed his first cut of the year. And then he had all the pressure on him that you could possibly have at the, at the, at the PGA Championship, and he went out and won. Uh, I think it's great for Peter. I'm very, you know, we're all very happy for Davis. Uh, we're happy for Jeff for making the Ryder Cup team and all that, but for hanging Dave, in. yeah, just hanging in there. Just you know, he, he kept with his routine. He he stepped with it. And when boy, when he went out there on Sunday, he, he had a he had the you know determination. He was going to win this golf tournament. I want to make the Ryder Cup team, and I'm going to I'm going to prove everyone that I can win a major. And Davis went out and played beautifully. Let me go ahead and give you the number to order the trainer. You see it in front of you: 800-530-6909, or visit their website: www.fitforgolf.com to order the trainer. Great to have you here. Thank you very much, Peter. A great pleasure always. Good luck with your game the rest of the year. Thank and, you very uh, much. Look forward to seeing you after you win your next couple Hopefully of tournaments. I, could, I hope to be on Golf Central a lot. Probably be next month. Let's go ahead <laughs> and uh, say goodnight to all of our viewers and thank them for being with us tonight. Good night, everybody. If you're having troubles with your game, see your local PGA professional. The PGA of America, making your game better, making golf a better game. Hey, thanks for being with us at the golf course today. My name's Jim Warren with Team America Health and Fitness. And today we're gonna discuss a fit for golf training system that'll help your game as you go out on the golf course. With me today, we have one of the finest players on the PGA Tour. His name is Billy Mayfair. He's a champion of the uh, Greater Milwaukee Open, of the Western Open, and also the Tour Championship. Billy, thanks a lot for being with us here today. Thank you, it's great being here. You know, whenever we talk about golf, we always think about going out and hitting golf balls. And uh, how important is it for a tour player to have strength and flexibility today? Well, it's very important. Uh, not only because it helps you hit the ball further, stay, it helps you get around the golf course easier, um, helps you stay in shape, but it also risks the chance of getting injuries out there. And as in any sport, if, if you're injured and you're not 100%, you can't beat anybody. Now, we know that the trainer, the Fit for Golf system, has its roots with NASA and a lot of professional athletes that, that play football and basketball and track. And bringing it to golf adds another dimension. Now, with your busy schedule, how do you find that the trainer Fit for Golf system helps you before you get to the golf course? Well, it helps me a great deal. Like you said, it helps my flexibility, helps me get loosened up in the morning, and it only takes a few minutes out of my day. You know, that's probably one of the most important factors, I would think, would be time, mm -hmm. especially with your busy uh, schedule. Well, we play so much on the tour, and if we're not playing, we're just not hitting balls and all that stuff, so it's very hard to find time to get to a gym or to, or, or to have a hard workout. Now, when we work with the you know, typical systems of exercise, it's always been a lot of repetitions. Mm -hmm. uh, the variable resistance with the trainer, uh, is that important, uh, especially if you're you know, just warming up or you have to do some rehab? Well, absolutely. It, uh, you know, if you're doing rehab and you're injured a little bit, you don't put as much tension on. If, if, you're, if you feel good, you, you just want to put as much tension on as you possibly can. And plus, it only takes a couple minutes. Now, a lot of people get bored, you know, with exercise. Does the short period of time with the great benefits you know, the trainer help you keep from getting bored with the routine? Absolutely. There's a lot of different exercises that you can do. You can put it on different weights. Uh, you can use it so many different ways. And plus, you have an instrument there where you can actually work on your golf swing and make your golf swing stronger. Now, while you're traveling, how tough is it to find a gym you know, to work out with? Well, it's real hard. We have, we have tra uh, trailers out on tour that, that travel with us and all that. But still, after you've played golf, you hit a lot of balls and you're tired, you just want to go back to the room. And with this trainer here, you just hook it up to the door and you can get a good workout in five, ten minutes. That's great. Uh, as far as staying with the program, would you say that the, the way people stick with the program is because it enhances their performance? Absolutely. People these days are going out and buying hundreds and thousands of dollars in golf clubs and in golf balls and equipment. When you can buy something like this, which doesn't cost as much and it keeps you in shape, and with, like I said, working on your own golf swing and strengthening your body to help the ball go further, those golf clubs are going to even make, it, make your golf game improve even that much more. 
So the ease of operation of the trainer is important to you, especially Absolutely. while you're traveling. Absolutely. You pull it out of the suitcase, you hook it up to the door, you do it for five, ten minutes, you're done, and you've had a great workout. I guess you're right. They used it in the spacecraft on the way to the moon, so it has to be easy when has you're to be traveling pretty easy now. That's right. Now, is the trainer fit for golf system only for men? Absolutely not. It's for men and women. My wife Tammy and I both use it a lot. Uh, she works out with it uh, in the room. We work out together in the room with it and uh, you know it's nice to travel with it. Billy, thanks for being with us today and talking about the Fit for Golf training system. Well thank you very much. I appreciate it and thank you very much for developing the Fit for Golf training system. It's kept my flexibility up and, and a lot less injuries. And you stand by because we're going to show you a two, five, and ten minute routine that'll keep you fit for golf. Hi, remember me? We just got back from the golf course. I'm going to show you why Billy Mayfair likes the trainer system so much. Not only are we going to build some strength and flexibility, but we're going to do it in a short period of time so that we can get back out where we'd like to be on the course. The trainer system came from the Apollo Space Program, used by the greatest athletes of all time because of the variable resistance or variable weight that we can use. What I'd like you to do is look at the red indicator. It points to the S of start. It shows that we have zero resistance on the trainer. We can dial up from one ounce up to 600 pounds worth of resistance. By pushing in the adjusting hub, we rotate the top casing. I'd like you to go around one revolution. We're now on one pound. We're going to use that one pound to duplicate a couple exercises. Let's go into the two minute routine. Work on our shoulders and our golf swing. Take the trainer and place it in the door mid-door position up top and block that door. The first exercise we're going to do is for our neck and shoulders. And again, this is for two minutes. You know, one of the major problems we have in exercise is time. How many of you go out to the golf course and you start off right on the first tee, you don't get warmed up till the seventh or eighth hole? These are the two exercises that will get you started right away. First exercise, hands, palm down, thumb wrap around grip. We want to get away from the door. Now make sure the door is locked when you do this. Hands, shoulder height. Place one foot in front of the other and you're going to lean forward gently, nice and easy. If you have a shoulder problem, don't go as far, but it's going to stretch those necks and shoulders from sitting at the desk all day. You know, Billy gets a chance to play six hours of golf a day, and so his flexibility is pretty good. He likes this because of strength. But you know, his flexibility is the injury prevention key to any sporting activity. As you get stronger, move up to another position. Do this for one minute as you go along. From here now, we're going to go right into our golf swing. And this is really probably the best exercise that anyone can do. By doing this exercise, not only will you build strength in your golf swing, but this could add 20 to 30 yards to your hooker slice. Key, feet, shoulder width, just like your golf stance. From here, grab the bottom of one handle, just like it's your golf club. Take the right hand, palm down, thumb wrap around grip. Push the right hand down behind your body, letting that back swing go back. Look at my right leg. My right leg is staying solid. From here now, I want to move down and through that range of motion. Right here, ease on that control line and let that arm go out. Now, remember, the key to this exercise is easy resistance at the beginning. Because if you use too much resistance and you start to strain, guess what? There's not going to be any transfer to your golf swing. So get into a good position, feet balanced. Rotate that shoulder and start to pull down and through that range of motion, moving through right there. Do this for one minute, and you'll start to see that your heart rate will go up a little bit, but you're starting to what? Loosen up those muscles just like you were at the golf range. That's the two-minute routine. Guess what? My shoulders are loose. My neck is loose. I'm ready to go hit some golf balls. Now, if you have five minutes, I want to show you a couple little exercises that you'll add to those two. The first one is to rotate and do a left-handed swing. Remember, feet shoulder width apart, get into a go good golf stance, you're going to hold the handle just like it's your golf club if you were swinging left-handed. You're going to draw that arm back, pushing that left hand now behind your body. Look at the shoulder rotation there. That shoulder rotation will now allow me to build strength in the right side. Now why do we want to build strength in this right side? To balance our lower back. How many of you get stiff in lower backs because you have to work all week, you can't play golf. So by getting into this position and moving through that range of motion, we're able to balance those muscles. Do this for about a minute and a half. As you get stronger, hold back on this handle and then move through using that resistance. 
That's what gives us better results shorter period of time. Next exercise, let's work on those rot rotator cuffs for another two minutes. We get into our position. We have the handles out in front. Grab the bottom of the handles. Now the key to this exercise is to roll your shoulders back and lock your wing bones in position. And now we want to keep our elbows in and rotate back and forth. Any of you that have a rotator cuff problem and have been at physical therapy, guess what? These are the same exercises that you've been taught to use to rehab your shoulders. Those of you that don't have a rotator cuff problem, if you want to keep from having one, do that for one minute every day. As you get stronger, hold back on one handle and look at the level of strength that you can build right there. Rotate around. Second part, do this for another minute and a half. That's your five minute routine. Notice what's starting to happen, breaking out of my forehead. It's called endorphins. I'm warming up and heating up my muscles. I'm heating up my body so that when I go out to perform, I'm ready to go. Now, let's say that you had 10 minutes to go. And we're going to add a couple more exercises, and you're going to have a fit for golf routine. We're going to put those arms out in front of us now, similar to our rotator cuff, but this is going to build strength in the smaller muscles in our golf swing. We want to make sure that we rotate. Now notice my balance. I'm not leaning into it, and I'm not using my body back and forth. I want to make sure that I'm using those muscles, and I'm concentrating on how I'm doing it. Now make sure you don't let that rope come across and hit you in the face or that you don't bend over and use in your back. Make sure you're in a good comfortable position, arms out front. If you have a shoulder problem, you're going to do it nice and easy. Do it for a minute and a half. And as you get stronger, hold back on one line and use that variable resistance because that's what builds strength. You know, a lot of people talk about those younger players out there. And you know that a lot of people lose their strength, they lose their flexibility, you lose your ability to perform. By doing this exercise a minute and a half on each side every day, you now find that you're going to enhance your performance. But notice the balance. Again, you need to start out easy. Work on flexibility first, then get into strength. Last exercise in your 10 minute routine is going to tighten your stomach, stretch your back and your hamstrings. How many of you are sitting five or six hours a day instead of playing golf five or six hours a day? So now when you go out, your stomach is hanging, your back is tight, your hamstrings are tight. This exercise is spectacular for correcting that problem. Take the trainer, keep it in the door, bring the handle up about nose height. You're going to place your back against the door. Now make sure the door is locked when you do this. From this position, put your seat against the door. Never arch your back. You want to make sure that your back is rounded. Now you're going to lean back against the door and you're going to pull straight down. Now keeping your knees bent, this is critical in making sure that you don't put any pressure in that lower back. In this position, oh, you stretch that lower back gently, then gently stretch those legs, bend those knees, come back up. Do it a second time. Readjust that handle. Now, controlling the resistance, with your hand on the handle, right up here. Now never jam that handle into the back of your neck or arch your back. You want to round your back right there. Pulling down for 10 seconds. Working on that stomach muscle and breathing freely. Now if you have a bad back, only go halfway. Do it gently, stretch. Remember, less today, more tomorrow. Third exercise, right here. Pull down for 10 seconds. Leaning against that door, working the stomach muscle. At the end of 10 seconds, ease on that line. Elbows down to the knees, gently stretch those legs, you're finished.